So the news story today is General Flynn resigning in disgrace and embarrassing the Trump administration. And what really should be the story is the leaks coming out of the White House. And it's been happening quite a bit now since Trump has been inaugurated. And it looks like there's going to be no stop to it because the White House is filled with people that were hired during the Obama administration. And apparently these folks are leaking like a sieve everything they hear and everything they see to the news media. It's treasonous and it really, it's something that can hamstring the U.S. government. It's dangerous. What they need to do is to go over the HR records and fire every person working in the White House that was hired during the Obama years. Every single person, right down to the, the cooks, the chefs, and the people who sweep the floors. You, you were hired by Obama, you're fired. Goodbye. You don't work here anymore. This is one thing that really has to happen. Has to happen like immediately because we can't have these leaks anymore. This is not this is not healthy for the government. It's just not good in any way. And the root cause of all of this, once again, is the new the news media's obsession with the Russians. I don't get it. I really truly don't understand why everybody is so obsessed with the goddamn Russians. Please, enough already. Our last president gave $400 million to the Iranians, our most bitter enemy on the planet, a country who, whose people chant death to America. They're not shy in the least in stating that their long-term goal is the death and destruction of America and Israel. And our, our last president signed a disastrous treaty with them, which allows them to continue to develop nuclear weapons and long-range missiles. And we financed them by giving them money. And we're all upset because the Trump administration is talking to the Russians. Wow. What are you going to tell me next? That Putin is a gangster? A thug? A dictator? Well, thank you, Captain Obvious. As if we didn't know that already. There was another Russian once upon a time who was a gangster and a thug and a dictator. His name was Joseph Stalin. Biggest mass murderer in the history of the human race. And yet, the United States was allied with him during World War II. So don't tell me that we can't talk to the Russians. Don't tell me that we can't make deals with the Russians, that we can't work more closely with Putin, because that's just crazy. This really just falls right into the, the new left-wing narrative. Basically, they're, they're vilifying the Russians, and I think because they're European and they're Christian. And they haven't been overrun by Muslims yet like Western Europe has. Let's face it. Western Europe is failing. It is failing quickly. It is being overrun by, by a Muslim influence, which is changing the face of Europe. Germany is no longer for Germans. France is no longer for French. Look at Sweden. Natural-born Swedes are a minority in their own country now. When Europe finally is Islam Islamicized, the, only, the last bastion of Christianity in the world is going to be the Eastern Orthodox Church in Russia. And this bothers people on the left. The, the leftist news media with their bias and their, their anti-Trump bias. You tell me how quickly could we eradicate ISIS and Al-Qaeda and international terrorism if we aligned ourselves with the Russians and put our minds to it? This is what they're trying to prevent. And this is why there's such a strong, strong vilification of Russia happening at all levels of the American news media. 
I don't believe it. I, I think that the best thing that we could do right now is to improve relations with the Russians. We can get better response out of Putin by engaging him constructively than constantly threatening him and backing him into a corner and growing and expanding NATO right to the Russian border. We wouldn't like it if it happened. We wouldn't like it if a foreign power was building an alliance that came right up to our borders. Can you blame Putin for acting the way he's acting? I can't. And this travel ban, which actually isn't a ban, it's a travel pause. It's a 90-day pause that clearly says we need 90 days to assess how to vet people coming from these countries. They say it's a Muslim ban. It's not a Muslim ban. There's 40 Muslim nations in the world. Only seven countries made this list. It's not banning Muslims. It's not banning people because they're Muslim. It's banning people who are coming from countries that are failed states. Every country on that list is a failed state. They have no central government. There is no database that we could vet people with. We cannot contact government officials in any one of those countries and say, can you give us a background check on Mr. So-and-so? Yet, people in this country are annoyed and angered because we actually want to know who's coming in. And we want to hit the pause button until we can figure it out. It's just... It's, it's mind-boggling, and I can't believe that this is actually happening in, in my country. These INS raids that have been happening for the past couple of days in multiple states across the country, some people are saying it's a travesty. It's a tragedy. I say it's a promise kept. Donald Trump promised us that we were going to crack down on illegal immigration in this country, and surprise, surprise, he's fulfilling his promise. Everybody's feeling so sorry. They have their new poster child, that woman from Arizona who was deported and uh, has two American-born children that she's been separated from. And I saw Jorge Ramos on Hannity last night tear a picture of the family in half and say, this is what Trump did, separated this family. Well, they're not really telling you the whole story. This woman was guilty of identity theft. She was using someone else's social security number. If you or I, any other American citizen, had uh, committed an identity theft, that's a felony. We could go to jail for a very long time. But we're supposed to ignore that when illegals do that because it's a victimless crime. They just want to work. No, it's not a victimless crime. When you're using other people's social security numbers, using social security numbers of dead people or of people who are not aware that their social security number is being used, it's identity theft. It's against the law. This whole culture that's been created by illegals in this country, this underground economy where people work who, who are not using fake social security cards, work off the books, get paid in cash, don't pay taxes on that cash, and then remit billions and billions of dollars every year from our country into foreign countries south of the border, untaxed money that's wire transferred right out of our country. It's like a giant vacuum cleaner sucking the wealth out of our nation. They come here, they live here illegally, they suck up benefits that are meant for Americans. I'm sorry, but if you're here illegally, and your kids are getting free education, and you're getting food stamps, and you're getting Medicaid, and you're getting all kinds of social service benefits, Section 8 and whatever else, that's stuff that's meant for a needy American. And every person who takes that, that's not supposed to be here, is taking away from someone else who is supposed to be here and needs those benefits and can't get them because it's all being sucked up by other people who are not supposed to be here. Look at California. If ever there was such a thing in our country as a failed state, California is a prime example. Look at what happened to that dam this week. It's crumbling. 
hundreds of thousands of people now, their homes are in danger of being washed away if this dam breaks. Because the state of California spares no expense to provide a nanny state for millions of illegals that live there, and they have no money left over for their own infrastructure. They put no money into this dam, into the upkeep and management and uh, in, in, in just making sure that the, the thing is not going to fall apart. I've been to California a few times, and one of the things that never ceased to amaze me is that the roads there haven't been paved since the 1940s. You drive around anywhere in Los Angeles, and it's just busted up roads everywhere. I mean, could you guys spread some asphalt once in a while? It, there's there's a, a referendum for California now to, uh, to become a, a sanctuary state. And, and possibly secede from the United States like that could ever happen. California could never survive as an independent country because they don't have the economy for it because they've wasted billions of dollars in taking care of people who are not supposed to be there. What's really, really disheartening to me and what's really been bothering me a lot since the election is just how ugly and divisive the left is in this country. I never knew it. I mean, I always knew that the left were a bunch of assholes, but I didn't know just how bad they really were. They actually will knowingly and willingly try to cripple the Trump administration and force it into becoming a failed administration just so that they could say, aha, we were right. It's like half the passengers on a plane trying to make the pilot crash, regardless of what it does to everybody else on the plane. What's wrong with, with leftist liberals is that they're Democrats first and Americans second. And we over on the conservative Republican side we are Americans first and Republicans second. And it really, really is, is disgusting to me the behavior that I'm seeing right now from liberals and leftists in this country who won't give the man at least six months to a year to just get the country rolling again. All he wants to do is secure our borders vet people coming in from the outside and create jobs for Americans. Since when has that gone out of style? There are lists of companies that I've seen circulating that leftists are supposed to boycott because they're pro-Trump. And we on the conservative side, we are compiling our own lists of companies that we don't want to do business with because they're insulting Trump. It's getting to be a bit ridiculous. How about keeping politics out of business and just be in the business of selling your product you know, so we don't have to keep a scorecard of who I can buy from and who I can't buy from? It's becoming a real pain in the ass. I'm tired of the mainstream media with their clear bias. They spent eight years kissing Obama's ass, literally, literally kissing his ass for eight years, and they tried to do the same for Hillary they tried to protect her and shield her from all of the scandals that surrounded her and her family. And all of that effort is now being flipped over on its other, on its tail end, and is now being directed as a war against the Trump administration. We're supposed to look to our news media to get unbiased, un unbiased news. I mean, what, what's wrong with just presenting the news as it is and, and not uh, trying to bury one president or prop up another? I'm tired of Hollywood elitists. I'm really sick to death of these rich, spoiled elitists in Hollywood telling us what's wrong with America.
You don't know what's wrong with America. You live in a mansion up in the Hollywood Hills. You get taken everywhere you want to go by limousine, and you take private jets to your Greenpeace meetings in uh, Switzerland, and you know nothing about the American people, about what it's like to live and work and struggle in this country. I'm sick of Saturday Night Live. I know it's been on for a long time, and, and political satire has been a long uh, part of their their repertoire. But this is something different. This is, this is a, a brutal caricature of Trump and the Trump administration. This is political assassination, what they're doing on Saturday Night Live. They didn't do anything even remotely resembling this kind of nastiness to Obama in the last eight years. I don't remember seeing anything like this on Saturday Night Live ever. And they seem to just delight in, in just belittling and insulting and presenting things in the ugliest of, of caricatures. I'm tired of it. I don't watch Saturday Night Live. I haven't watched it since Belushi died, to be honest with you. I'm just, I'm just so disheartened right now because the election is over and this shit is supposed to stop. Nobody says that you can't be the loyal opposition, but you're actively and aggressively trying to topple the administration. Talks of impeachment. For what? For what? You have to actually do something illegal to be impeached. You know, like um, lying under oath, committing perjury, um, you know, that sort of thing. Anybody remember that? I don't know. Just lately, I've, I've been very, very disheartened and disappointed with the direction of this country, not because of Trump, but because of the people who won't have enough common courtesy to give the man six months to a year to at least try to govern the country.